this is the Provoke Brawn. Have you got some problems with the RGB lighting on your Gigabyte graphics card or on other peripherals from Gigabyte? And it's causing you a bit of a headache. You can see here, for example, the RGB on this 4070 Ti just flashing in a really distracting way while I was in the middle of gaming. And I want to talk about how to fix it or what you can do to tweak the settings so it's not as distracting. And the interesting thing about this GPU is that the RGB isn't on as standard when it's in its zero RPM mode, but the lighting around the fans will light up when it starts to spin. And you could sync it with your motherboard and other lighting in the case, so you have some effects across there with lighting syncing and some interesting settings, fairly straightforward. But as standard, if you just plug and play and don't download new software and just go on with it, you might find some issues even if you installed NVIDIA's graphics drivers and just obviously all your updates in Windows and whatever else, you may have some problems because you've seen that flashing that I've shown you already and that's not very nice. So we're going to work to get rid of that. So the first thing that I tried and I would suggest doing is downloading Gigabyte's control center. You can see that on the top right here. And this allows you to synchronize things between the various different devices in there. So you can see the motherboard and graphics card syncing. Now, one of the things I recommend doing before you get started trying to fix your RGB is to make sure that the GPU isn't set to zero RPM. So go into the fan mode on here under fan control on the graphics card and just turn the fans up, even if it's only temporarily. It's just going to basically make them spin constantly because when they're not spinning, the RGB isn't on, which is obviously not helpful. This means you can then look at the various different RGB settings and adjust the colors and the lighting and the speed. Now you'll notice that the fans are changing color on the case, the RGB lighting strips and on the GPU itself. This is all because it's all synced through the motherboard and the graphics card in that software using the RGB headers on the motherboard. The next thing to do is to go into Gigabyte Control Center and find the update sections. So the little arrows, the circles around them. But just be sure to check in there and see if there's any updates for any of the parts of software. There may be various different updates for things like RGB Fusion within it. But it will also suggest things like Norton Antivirus. So don't download that. That's crazy. Now head over to the Gigabyte Fusion website. If you're having problems with the control center, Gigabyte Fusion is a separate download, which you can download and install. Gigabyte actually suggests that if you do have problems, it's worth uninstalling Control Center and then installing RGB Fusion. I'd recommend maybe using Control Center to make sure you've got the latest firmware updates on various different things first. So it is worth using to make sure everything is working properly, mm -hmm. but then go about uninstalling the app itself because it may conflict with RGB Fusion. Mm -hmm. Now I will say that for the most part, I found that I could get it to work quite nicely with Control Center, but initially without it, it was a bit of a problem. And without the updates to it was when I had that flashing issue. So you may find that downloading Control Center and just making sure you've got the updates fixes the issue. But if it doesn't, uninstall it and then install RGB Fusion instead. So go through the steps to unpack and install that. And then you'll find that you have access to various different RGB lighting effects in here that you can control, including these different ones here, but also the speed and brightness on the right hand side. And you'll see there's some intelligent ones that will change the lighting around the ring of the fans to let you know, for example, what the temperatures have changed. So you can change it quite effectively in here. And then you can save the profiles. Now, one of the other things you might have noticed is that when you've set this up with the RGB lighting of your choice, that if and when you restart your machine, suddenly that RGB isn't what it used to be. Well, there is a solution to that as well. So in the Gigabyte software, you can click on the little cog icon on the top right hand corner here for the settings and basically make sure that it's set to always run on boot. You also want to make sure it's updated, obviously, and adjust some of these LED sleep and hibernation settings to tweak all of that. What that should do then is to ensure that the Gigabyte RGB Fusion is always running because if it isn't, then obviously the RGB lighting might not be working properly. So if you are finding that your RGB lighting isn't doing what it should be, it could just be that that software is not running properly. Obviously not ideal to have software constantly running, but if you want the RGB to look nice and to avoid these problems, then this might be one solution. Another one may well be at hardware level. So I've installed Lee and Lee's AL120 V2 fans in this case and then in this build alongside some Lee and Lee RGB strimmers. Now, both these setups require two different controllers. 
which you can see examples of here. So these are fan controllers and RGB lighting controllers that then connect to the motherboard in this Gigabyte setup, which has a Gigabyte motherboard and Gigabyte GPU in it. And on those controllers, there is a little cable that plugs into the control box that has two connections on it one for fan power for example and the other one for rgb lighting now the rgb lighting connection allows you to connect up to the 5 volt rgb header on your motherboard and that allows for the syncing of the lighting so where you've seen the syncing of the lighting effects for example with the gigabyte control center software earlier on where the fans and the rgb strip and the gpu were all changing color when i click that button that's because of this cable being plugged in what I found was that I need to make sure that I was actually using the two headers. So on this motherboard, for example, there are two headers on here. And instead of being marked RGB, they are marked LED. So this is the DLED one, which has three pins in it for 5 volt RGB control on the bottom left there. And essentially, I needed to make sure that I was using both those ports. Initially, I was basically routing them through and I was only using this bottom port which you can see there, I think that you might be overloading that potentially if you do that. So if you combine too many things into one system, it's actually better to use two headers. So this is worth trying, and this will vary from motherboard to motherboard, but I think it's worth pointing out if you are having issues, it may be worth thinking about the cabling and the logic of it. So you can see that there's a DLED2, which is another 5 volt header on the top right of this motherboard as well. The same sort of logic appears on other motherboards that I've seen, and using those then allows you to sync the RGB lighting across multiple devices, even if they're from different brands. Obviously, Lee and Lee fans, Lee and Lee RGB strips with gigabytes hardware here, then it enables you to have those sort of uh, same visual RGB effects throughout the case. So hardware and software combined with these tips will hopefully sort out your problems. Do be sure to check out the description to find out all the links and other things you need to know. This has been the Provoke Pro, and thanks very much for watching.